Well, Brian, we're up on the roof here, and the notable thing are these pieces of concrete at the back. What are they for? Well, they're the originals, as we were discussing earlier on downstairs. That's the original concrete that held the, uh, the RSJs. You can just see the metal sticking out of the bottom. That was yeah. actually the height of the original roof of Summerland. Right. They, uh, they actually went right out across to the front and supported the whole roof. So that original roof was just two, three feet below those people's gardens? Oh, literally, yeah. yeah. If you're in the people's gardens at the back, you were looking straight out across the back of the original roof at Summerland. Rather ruined their view then. <laughs> it did, but ironically enough, we had never had any complaints about no, it. Uh, <laughs> no. Just to go back to the construction you were saying earlier, when they took the old Derby Castle down, they actually pushed this cliff back a bit, didn't they? They did indeed. I, if, if my memory serves me correct, I, I remember them working on this after they dropped Derby Castle for a, a, probably about six months, I think. Mm. There was a lot of blasting went on here. I, th I think originally, I think they were just saying it was to make sure the cliff was faced, but I think they actually took a... Sorry, the cliff cliff was safe mm. but I think they actually took it back about 10 or 15 foot right. if my memory serves me correct and to be honest this looks very unstable now it is but once again this this can be resolved when Summerland comes down this will be dealt with mm. we're committed to deal with it one way or the other obviously because the, the new developers want to make it safe just another piece of history when this present version of Summerland was constructed, of course, there was some dispute with a resident at the top there about the noise, and you told us a very interesting piece of uh, reconstruction that went on. I mean, the fact was there was a glass roof originally here, wasn't there? There was. When I came here in 83, 84, around about then, the, the, the roof over there on our left was, was actually a glass roof that, that covered about two-thirds of the roof area. Mm. We did have complaints about one individual in particular, on the back about noise and in the end Barry Noble who owned who operated at the time took what was it people might remember there was an actually a, a timber skating ring that used to be on the piazza level took the skating ring down and uh, put it up on the roof and covered it with felt <laughs> so I, I that's another it takes somebody like yourself Charles, Charles to remind me of all these little things that and that's still there it yeah. is it's still mm. under that that roof over there now we're actually standing on the roof of the aquadrome how long has the aquadrome been closed closed about six years ago now six right. or seven years mm. ago. when the nsc's exactly new pool yeah opened, there's this yeah. shut at the at the back end of this closed november december time i think the new pool opened january february which i was involved with because i actually opened up the uh, cafe and the bar facilities down yeah. there for which is operated by Summerland. this roof we're standing on seems very stable and safe but the wa there was a time when the Acadrome roof was in trouble, wasn't it, after some winter storms? Yes, if we look behind us, you can actually see that far corner over there that uh, myself and a young Mr Beresford at the time, who now works down at Marks and Spencer's, who was the house sparks here, were called in one night, and there's a tale about this, Charles, but I'm not going to go into too many <laughs> details, but it actually took the whole corner of the Acadrome roof away. Yeah. It was a really bad night, and the, the front of the, the play area, the, the glass wall there, was actually blowing, it was bending, it was, it was coming in maybe, oh, excuse me, maybe uh, six inches or more. Yeah. And next thing is we got a report saying there's a problem in the acrodrome, and Mark and I came through to the acrodrome, and we could actually see daylight from inside the acrodrome. We were looking up at the stars Gosh. outside. Yeah. And there was two big glass doors on the original acrodrome, what they used to use as the front entrance, and one of them had blown in, and it, it was like that uh, sort of windscreen glass that shatters into tiny little pieces. So myself and Mark had a brilliant plan. If we get a lump of eight before ply, take it outside, and don't forget there's like a force eight gale blowing, and the wind would bring this piece of ply back against what was the door, and we could tie it in place and save any more damage. <laughs> <laughs> it worked a treat <laughs> in as much as we got the pie outside and it came back against the door, but unfortunately it took the other door, which was about eight by ten foot made of glass. <laughs> With it, and myself and Mark were sat in the reception of the acrodrome covered in glass. Oh, but of course our political masters to this day are convinced it was um, it the was wind that done the damage. Of course. Mm -hmm. yes. And it was all done with it, it was actually the Brian very Murray and Mark motors. Beresford. <laughs> <laughs> That's the door I'm talking about, yes. not the roof. <laughs>